This week, work continues on fitting and shaping Arabella's main mast up. And make sure you stay tuned till the end, where there's a bit of news for those who like to follow the project closely. And lastly, if you like the music I whip up for the show here, you can check out Volume 3, freshly uploaded to my Bandcamp page. All the info is in the description below. That's the end of my shameless plug. Hit the like and subscribe buttons if you like the video today, and thanks for watching. So I've got a piece of plywood here, and I just traced out the shape of the mast step. It's a little bit narrower up forward than it is in the stern. I can lay that in here and figure out exactly where I need to nip on these bronze floors. So I have the first set up here marked, so I'm going to take the sawzall and the angle grinder and nip those off, and then I can get this wedged in there and kind of move it fore and aft back here until it's centered and mark where I need to cut on these tabs. And then we can get this pattern to sit down in there and we can start figuring out the heights. But first thing I gotta tend to these a little, little bit. One thing we don't wanna do with the mast step is have it wedged in here in such a way that a strong downward force could push the frames out. Boats have actually sunk that way. So what I wanna do is nip off just a little bit of the mast step. So in this case, Ah, oh, less than three eighths of an inch. Just a little shave off either end and that'll nestle down in there. I wanna make sure I'm not hitting the wings here. So I'm gonna go take a little bit off this pattern and make sure that that'll nose down in there. And then we can mark out and cut the next uh, set of tabs here. Kiva, Kiva, did you break out again? Nope, nope, you are in here. Okay, good. Whew, that scared me. Good boy. That's a good boy. Thank you. So this sits down really nicely now. I'm hitting the floor timber fore and aft of where the mass is gonna land. I had to grind this one down, uh, it was about a quarter of an inch. The web was just off from that one a little bit. So now the next thing I had to do is transfer, <clears throat> excuse me, where each of these floors land on the pattern. And I gotta figure out how deep I need to make the channels. And my hope is that I'll make these two middle channels the same depth and keep that really easy. And then I'll make one of these ends just rest on top of the floor. And then I'll notch the last one just a little bit so it can sit in there. And that way, if I pull these measurements right, we should be able to drop it in here and worst case scenario, just shave the one end a little bit to get it to settle down in there. So to mark these, Got it where I want it. I got this big old chunk of iron on it here, so it's it's pretty stable. But I definitely don't want to don't want to wiggle it. So it kind of wedged in here in the hall, and I'm just taking a straight edge, holding it against the floor, and then marking up. And then this is both getting me the angle that I need to cut that notch. Uh, and it's also getting me the location. 
So we'll try to get the forward end here just to rest on it. That seems to be the greatest distance it has to cover. So we won't worry about marking an angle on that one. And that means these need to be one and three quarters deep. So if you do those one and three quarters deep, that should be just past that one a little bit. So it'll end up hitting that nose where we can just take a swipe or two with the hand plane. Now that this is all marked, I can take it out and I can transfer all of these marks over to the uh, actual mass step. And uh, like I said, that forward end, I think we're just gonna aim to have it sitting on the floor. This aft one, we're gonna end up with about a quarter of an inch deep notch. And these middle one, we're gonna be looking at one and three quarters of an inch. So I think what I wanna do is we'll have to do a little work at the forward end, so it'll notch down in there like we did with the pattern. Uh, but it can be a little bit wider. I cut the pattern a little small, so it's some wiggle room. So I gotta pull a couple measurements there. And then I'll cut the middle two here and we'll get the mass step in here and set down and I'll see exactly where this last one lands and see if we need to do uh, anything more. We can cut this last quarter inch one with it just inside the boat here. We can move it back and put it onto the sole beams. Got my first notch here roughed out. I'm gonna tackle the second one here. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get my skinny rabbit plane in there. Probably gonna have to just clean it up with the chisel all the way, but we'll grab it in a minute and see. So I'm sure some of you are wondering where Alex is yesterday and today. The answer is, it is the weekend. And Alex typically doesn't work on weekends because his girlfriend, Kira, she has weekends off. So they take a little bit of time to, you know, be together and not be working, which makes sense. And I've been working more like 10 days on, four days off, 14 days on, six days off, five days off, that kind of jam. Uh, and it's worked out pretty well for Alex and I recently. So, you know, as the project has evolved, we and our roles and everything have evolved. So initially Alex was doing just a ton of video work and filming, and then we got Ben on, who's been doing an awesome job editing the videos. We took that off Alex's plate. And he had some more time when he was working on the filming, and he started woodworking more. And he took to woodworking like a duck takes to water. Uh, and he seems to have really enjoyed it and really wants to focus more on advancing his skills and just getting lost in the woodworking. <clears throat> so I've taken on a little bit more of the camera work and I've been kind of splitting that up. Uh, but us working like slightly different shifts means that we're here most of the week together and we each get, you know, a day or two a week where we're alone in the shop and get to do our thing and not have to be hollering, hey, quiet on the set. I need to talk to the camera when someone's running the power planer and we're not bumping into each other in the hall. So that's why I see Alex here without me sometimes and sometimes I'm here without Alex and that's why we're putting in similar hours. We're just doing it in slightly different schedules. All right, I'm gonna go grab the rabbit plane and we'll see if we can get that in there. I doubt it, but we'll try. For starters, does this even fit? It does not. Almost. All right, so we'll just take a swipe. Swipe, swipe, swipe. There we go. Oh, nice.
dearly, dearly hope I got these right. We are gonna find out soon. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna grab a little bite to eat, and then I gotta do a little bit of shaping at the very forward end here, where it's gonna touch that frame, make sure that we're not gonna touch the, uh, the sides of the wings. And then probably hit these with the file, and just clean up the threads a little bit so those aren't so sharp. And then I wanna round out this edge here a little bit more, not where it's gonna contact the bronze floors, but kind of in between it, and scoop this out a little bit. Uh, and that way, someday, when you're trying to reach into something that fell down in there, you'll have just like a little more clearance, a little more comfort getting around. And uh, it won't really, I mean, structurally, <laughs> sinks pretty deeply. Yeah, man, I'm not ready for like the 90 degree heat of summer. No. But I am ready for uh, some like 50 or 60 Slightly. degree days. High 40s would be High beautiful. High 40s. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Do you want to lead the way? Uh, sure. <laughs> it's starting to actually look like a sailboat. Yeah, it huh? looks like a sailboat. Yeah, it's been really cool to get the uh, the interior closer. Yeah. And be able to like, I can actually start to. You can start to visualize. Yeah. Well, especially with the uh, with the cabin up. You know that dummied up. <clears throat> yeah. It just gives you an idea of the headroom, and you can. Then you can really sort of conceptualize the walls and just how it would be divided and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, definitely I think we're gonna deviate pretty far from the plans for the interior. I have... Yeah, I got a, got a lot of ideas. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Cool, 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 cool. All these aren't all these aren't in. And as you said, you weren't you hadn't necessarily planned on doing this, right? <clears throat> no, well. Or, yeah, when we when we built the bronze floors, I was just planning on, like I said, just keel stepping it. But yeah, it's the joys of learning and doing more research. Well, it's just, just as you get into it more, right? You learn as you go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we uh, well, uh, we were welding in the boat the other yeah. day, so I uh, poured a little water into the bilge to. Gotcha. So you can some, see words. Rather some ice <laughs> in the boat than. Yep. Fire in the boat.
We've had a bunch of questions recently about how we know that the boat hasn't changed shape as we've added and done work on it. And a lot of people are kind of confused as to how we would even figure that out at this point. So if you think about building something like a house, the floors are flat, the walls are vertical, it's pretty easy to make sure that things are on track. Uh, once we took the molds out of the boat, most of our reference lines went with it. Uh, that's where we had where we could really kind of measure points in the boat and see. Uh, and we should have checked things before we put the knees in, to be honest. Uh, but nothing had moved at all uh, through our checking, and we just kind of got on a roll. But before we go really any farther in the build, we want to give it a double check. Uh, I think there's still enough flexibility in the hull that we could tweak it one way or the other a little tiny bit if we needed to. Uh, but the more pieces we put in the boat, obviously, the more and more rigid it becomes. So the first step for this process was to lop the top of the Samson post off a little bit so that we could get our center line string back up. And the Samson post will end up getting cut even lower at some point. And then once you had the center line string strung, we could go through and start checking the measurements. So once I got the vertical line strung here, the next step was to drop the plumb bob down and see if our center line up high is the same as our center line down low. So we don't want is for the boat to be racked at all or for the top to be off to one side. So without pulling out a tape measure, it looks pretty flipping good. Um, the plumb bob is right in the middle of the center line. And I checked that here at midship and back by the engine and up forward by where the chain locker is gonna be and ended up dead center every time. So we know that our center line is still straight and that it is nice and plumb from center line up there to center line down at the keel. The other thing we checked was to run a string from the shelf on port or on starboard to the shelf on port and put a bubble level in there. And that's to make sure that obviously the boat isn't cocked to one side or the other. And that measurement looks really good. And then we can check the width of the boat off of this plumb bob on the center line as well by taking a ruler and going out to the clamp so we are 62 and 7 eighths. If we do the same thing over here, make sure we're not hitting bolts. We are 62 and 3 quarters. So depending on exactly what angle I have this on the clamp, that'll definitely adjust for that tiny little bit. And if the boat is an eighth or a quarter inch wider on one side or the other. That's not going to matter at all. Uh, so we probably should have checked this stuff a bit earlier, uh, and we got probably a little bit of beginner's luck in here that nothing moved while we were doing it. Or maybe that's just this testament to uh, the building that it's tied to, although that definitely moves and shakes when it's windy. So I don't know. I'm going to chalk up to beginner's luck. But if you're building a boat, remember to keep checking it. And now that we have the Samson post lopped off, It'll be a little easier to throw the strings up here and check it anytime we want. Another question that we've been having recently is about the height of the sole or the floor inside the boat. And the answer is it's going to be sitting on top of these beams here. So these were drawn in by William Atkin, the designer, for how wide and how high up that should be. And we went with what he designed. So when we were walking around on those staging planks laid on top of these, that's very close to the height that it'll actually end up being. I think he calls for an inch and a quarter or inch and a half thick planks on these beams, which seems kind of beefy. Um, but the ones that we had on here were like inch and three quarters. So it's pretty similar to the height that we're going to have. And if we wanted to have a wider floor, we'd have no choice but to bring it higher in the boat, which would make the housetop go even higher, which would give us more windage. And you don't really want to do that. So it's a balance between keeping it low and having the headroom and not having as much width to walk on. And you also have to remember that by the time bunks go in here and storage in the back, all of this is going to end up getting built out. And if we are going to end up kind of treading on these frames a little bit on the lower part, we can always take some boards and put them across them like that and plank up this a little bit. And that won't help you all that much when you're sitting at anchor, but when the boat is heeled over, it actually creates kind of a nice spot to walk on the, uh, the downhill side of the sole. Uh, so that's an option that we can do, too, if we want to try to 
widen things up a little bit. Uh, but we really don't want to make the house top any higher than it has to be for a lot of reasons. So living with kind of a narrow sole on the boat is just part of the game. When we put the sole in here, it'll all be broken up into hatches so that we'll be able to open it up and store things in the bilge as long as it's a dry bilge and have access to the bilge and all of that jazz. All right, so Steve and I are just wrapping up putting in the last of the bronze floors that we just made for the frames that needed to be steamed in after the molds got taken out. Um, and this is really fun because it is a project that we can completely finish off, take off the list, um, which so far there hadn't been a lot of those. Uh, so that feels really good. We'll also be able to put down some boards again and make a makeshift sole so it'll be much easier to walk down there. It's kind of hard to be like walking along on the sole beams and kind of tripping over ourselves. The other thing is, is that now that we have that done, we can now split up into uh, multiple different projects. So a lot of the things that we've been working on right now have been kind of dependent on needing a couple of people to work on it or um, something needed to be done before another. And so we needed to kind of like play along uh, with what we were working on before we could move on to something else. Um, and now we kind of have the freedom to branch out and tackle multiple things at once, which is fun because we'll be able to show you guys a lot more things and we'll be moving a lot faster and getting a lot more done, or at least seemingly. Um, so one of the next projects that we need to do is uh, tackle this space. We're going to clean it up because what I'm going to be working on next is figuring out the spars for Arabella. So we have Victoria's old spar that needs to be stripped and uh, we got to see if that's good enough to be able to reuse for the mizzen. We'll probably shave that down. Um, and then I'm going to have to uh, make up a um, main mast for Arabella. So one thing that we don't get to show you guys very much on the channel is all of the work that we do behind the scenes. Um, so there's going to be a lot of me trying to figure that out and studying, making sure what the best course of action for that is. And then of course, we're going to have to uh, make up all of the rigging and all that kind of stuff for it. So there's a lot of really fun stuff coming up. And while I'm doing that, Steve is going to move on and start working on things in the interior of the boat, which is also going to be really cool to see coming together. So a couple of things recently have been brought to our attention. Uh, one of those is that YouTube, or at least people are no longer getting notifications from YouTube that our videos have been uploaded. And that is a bummer for you, and that is a bummer for us. Uh, the other thing that has been brought to our attention is that when we do things like, you know, pull off some planks and have some rivets that we're going to get rid of, uh, or we lop off the top of the Samson post and think, man, this is too pretty for firewood. Somebody would like this. Uh, and we take those and we throw them up on the website for sale, we announce it in a video. And that means that anyone who watches that video in the first one or two hours of it being live has a chance to purchase them. And anyone else is kind of out of luck. So if you're one of those people who lives in a different time zone, has a job, has some other responsibility that precludes you from watching the video the second it's uploaded every day, uh, you kind of miss out on this. So we want to even the playing field for the merchandise and that kind of thing. And we want to make sure that people don't miss a video again. So we've created a newsletter. Uh, it will go out through email every Friday morning when we post the video. It will have the link to the video and it will also have any upcoming information. So if we're going to throw rivets up for sale, we will tell you that next week at 7 a.m. rivets are going to go on sale. You can set an alarm. You don't even have to watch the video. You can put a significant other on detail to make sure they get one. Whatever you got to do, you'll know it's coming. You can be one of the first people in line. Same thing when we do the t-shirt campaigns or uh, when we're looking for volunteers, which hopefully COVID will kind of start to wrap up this year and we can get some more people into the shop. And when we're looking for volunteers, that's the first place we're going to send the announcement as well. So if you want to make sure you never miss a video, that you're first in line for any of the merch and you're first in line for any volunteer opportunities, sign up for the newsletter. The information's below and uh, we'll keep you in the loop and you will be some of the first to know. Thank you so much for following, for all the support. We really appreciate it. We couldn't do without you and we'll see you next time.